um, this this spring, I went uh, wild turkey hunting for, for the first time. And uh, I'd never done it before. I knew nothing about it. Um, I mean, zero. So, so I was a, a, uh, a definitely a, a, a learner in this thing. And I learned a lot of things. I, I learned that the turkeys uh, have, have very good eyesight. They, they can just see forever. And, and so you've got to be really careful uh, about movement and stuff. I, I learned that they have really good hearing. And uh, so if, if, you have, if you want to catch a turkey, what, what you have to do is you have to stay out of sight and you have to not be heard, uh, which when you know, you're kind of spastic like me, uh, that's, that's a challenge. That's, that's, that's a big challenge um, for someone like me. And, and so what you do is, at least what we did, is, is we'd get up very early in the morning. We'd meet at 4 a.m., which I honestly didn't know was even a time uh, uh, until the spring. Um, so that was new for me. But we'd get up at 4 a.m. and we'd meet and we'd go off down out in the country somewhere in a secret location that we can't, uh, I can't, I've sworn to secrecy, I can't tell you where it's at. Um, and uh, we'd go off into a, by a, a cornfield thing and walk off into a, we'd see a wooded area way off and we'd, we'd, you know, go out. It's still very, very dark and the turkeys are still sleeping and, and we'd go find this uh, wooded area. We'd park, like I say, by the, by the, by the side of the road and, um, you put camo on, like like head to toe. I mean, I mean, again, I didn't even know there was this much camo. I didn't know like they have like uh, stuff to put over your little nets. Even like the, our faces were hidden, and gloves and boots were camo. And I mean, it was literally camo, head to toe, uh, everything covered, uh, so you can blend in to the environment there. And then we we sludged our way through it. And, and I, I, you know, I, I think to myself, oh, you're just going to walk across a cornfield into the wood area, no big deal, unless it was just plowed. I mean, I think I, I, like, I'm like, man, this is like walking through mud, but it wasn't mud. It was dry, but it was soft, just sludging through. It was terrible for me. Um, Jack, was, he, he, he actually was like, come on, slow, you know. <laughs> uh, so it, it, it was better for him <laughs> than, than for, for this rookie guy. And then we'd go off in his lightly wooded area that was way off in, in the distance. So we'd get there, and what you do is you find your spot, and it's, it's, it's overgrown, and there's tall weeds and brush and trees and, and, and stuff like that. And you find a good tree or something solid that you can lean against because you're going to hang out. You're going to hang out there for a few hours, right? So you, you find something that, that's stable and comfortable, and, and then you wait uh, for the turkeys. <laughs> Uh, again, it sounds you know not, not that big of a deal, but it, this is a new experience for me. Now, now I'm a city boy, right? I've spent my whole life in town. Um, there's lots of lights in, in town. Um, there, there, there's there's street lights all night long. <laughs> you go outside, there's light. Uh, no matter where you go, at some point, sooner or later, a car is going to drive by. There's just a glow in the city. I mean, there's just always something. If you live anywhere near Pioneer, there's always a glow. <laughs> you know, there's a glow all the time. So you're never, like, really dark uh, in, in, in the city. But to, on the farm, in the middle of a grove of trees, in the middle of a field, man, it is complete darkness. As a matter of fact, this, this was my view. Um, <laughs> at 4.30, whatever it was, 5 o'clock in the morning by the time we get settled in there. And, and you know darkness, right? There's something kind of oppressive uh, about darkness. Now, now, Jack wasn't scared. He's a seasoned hunter. Uh, I didn't tell him that I was, like, uh, wetting myself, you know, uh, the, the whole time. I'm going, like, man, it's dark. You don't know what's out there. Uh, I mean, you don't know, are there other people? How do I know there aren't, like, really mean hunters also waiting for us? I mean, I, I didn't know. I don't know. I, I, all I know is I hear the stories of mountain lions, you know, making their way into Iowa and, 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 and wild bear and all. And I'm thinking, man, I, 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 okay, I have a gun, but it's, it's loaded for turkey. <laughs> it's, it's not loaded for bear. Uh, I don't even know what the difference is, but it sounds different. And, 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 and I'm thinking of all these things that could be out there and you don't know what's hiding. Uh, you can't see, or at least I can't. And so there could be like a hole in front of you. You could fall into a pit in any step. I mean, any step could be over. So I was glad Jack went first. Um, <laughs> I figured I'd hear him, if nothing else. <laughs> I said, man, Jack, that's too bad. You got your keys? <laughs> Can you throw those up? <laughs> uh, man, so it's a, it's a little bit um, oppressive, a little bit intimidating, uh, a little bit, uh, well, if you're a city boy, maybe even a little, little bit scary out there if you're out there wandering around in, in, in the darkness. Um, it, it's just what it is, <laughs> at least for me. <clears throat> So I, I was glad I was with Jack because because uh, he he's experienced and he wasn't intimidated and he he, he was really good, but but I also learned something 
uh, that I didn't know. I learned all kinds of stuff. I mean, I, had, I, was, I was total like a fish out of water in, in this situation. But I also learned I had no idea the country was so quiet at like 4.30 in the morning. I mean, I figured it's just always noisy and, and animals, and I'm sure in some places there are, but, but I mean, we'd go in there, and it was just like nothing. We, we, we'd settle down. I mean, you could hear like trucks like several miles away on the highway driving, but I'm like, man, where, where, where's all the action? This is the wild. I mean, isn't this supposed to, isn't this supposed, stuff supposed to be happening? But, it, but, but at that moment, and we're there for, for a short time, it's absolute uh, quietness. So, you're out, you're, you hunt turkey, right? You, 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 find, you find your spot, you settle in, and then you, you sit still. Your goal, really, at this stage of the game is just to be kind of come be part of, of the darkness. I mean, you just, just, no one should know you're there. No animal, no anybody, especially turkeys, should know that you're, you're even there. So you don't move. You don't move your arms. I'm a guy who goes like this all day long just for fun. I mean, I sit them tapping my thumb on the desk and tapping my legs. You don't move your legs. Uh, uh, later, uh, one of our experiences, uh, a turkey got away because I was simply, I don't know, staring at the ground and, and Jack signaled that there was a turkey and I looked up and the turkey like 100 feet away saw me and said, I'm out of here. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm camouflaged. <laughs> you can't see me. He goes, yes, I can. <laughs> I mean, you can't move. You just can't. I mean, I went like that. That was my movement, and, and, and that turkey from, I don't know, quite a way, a long ways away, a long, uh, saw it and, and, and took off. You don't talk, you don't whisper, you don't get on your cell phone and, and, and you know, play a game of Clash of Clans. Uh, you, you do nothing, you do absolutely nothing while you sit there and wait. You don't sneeze, you don't cough, nothing. You stare into the darkness and wait. Now, I had a whole different vision of hunting. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> you just sit here. But that, that, that's what you do, right? But then something mysterious happens the longer you sit there and the closer you get to daytime. Uh, the, 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 this, this, you're engulfed in darkness, but at some point the sun begins to break through into the darkness. And these purples and, and pinks and different colors start creeping across the the sky and they evolve into the oranges and, and the yellows and, and, and the light begins to invade all these dark spaces that you didn't know were there because it was dark and the shadows begin to flee and you begin to see a little bit of the shape of the hills start just, just kind of before your eyes they start forming before you. And you begin to see the branches and, and, and the leaves and the lights reflecting off of things around you. And this crazy thing happens. The world begins to wake up. I'm not used to getting up before the world, <laughs> you know. And the world begins to wake up. Uh, squirrels are squirreling around. Uh, and they don't even know you're there. You're, they just think you're part of the sticks, right? And this crawl, I'm thinking this squirrel's going to crawl down the tree and crawl across my face and, and we're both going to have a mis an accident. Um, <laughs> Uh, they got close. Uh, we had deer right behind us stirring around. They finally decided to get up, and then they start snorting and doing whatever they do and stomping and trying to like trying to get us to move uh, and to, like figure out what is this? I smell it, <laughs> and uh, and I think you know, and, and they're trying to figure us out, and it's like don't move. <laughs> so I'm not I'm like I want to look. I want to look. You know, but <laughs> you're not supposed to look. <laughs> and so and, and it's just so cool to see things getting getting. Uh, to wake up, the birds start singing their morning songs. The various versions that Jack could tell you all the birds are. I'm going, that's a pretty bird, and he could, you know, he could tell you what they actually are. Uh, even the cows, you know, they start mooing off in the distance. You're like, wow, the cows weren't even awake yet. We we beat them. This is insane. Who does this? <laughs> Who does this? And then the sun begins to sneak over the horizon, and there's like this hope that fills your heart, and 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 like it's morning, right? It's 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 suddenly there you are. That's actually. Uh, taken from one of our spots. Uh, you see one of his decoys, if you look real closely, uh, in, in, in there. Um, and, and all of a sudden, you can see, and it's, and it's morning, and it's, and, it's, and it's a new day. But then you hear it, right? The gobble. And the, the, the turkeys are waking up, and they're, and they're calling off to the other turkeys, hey, you still awake? You still alive? <laughs> Any of those bad hunters get you? <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. But uh, <laughs> they're calling out to the other turkeys, around them. 
great, great experience. Great experience for me. Now, now forget the hunting part, okay? Let's just, let's just pretend that didn't turn out too well <laughs> for me this year. I'm, I, I'm new. I, the experience for me what was, I mean, I didn't care if I got a turkey or not. It was, sorry. <laughs> the, 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 the experience for me was incredible. Just watching the, the, that scene come to life and from darkness to light and watching the world wake up and transform through the power and the light of the sun. All over. It was worth every moment for me. Just being a part of that scene and being, being there in the darkness and watching it turn light. It was, it was wonderful. It was, it was awesome for me. I loved that. I'm looking forward to next year um, already. Now, now, the prophet Isaiah lived in a time of intense spiritual darkness in the land. I, I mean, he, he, it, it, was, it was spiritually dark everywhere. The nation was in decline. People were described as blind and deaf to the Word of God. They, they just didn't care what God had to say and, and what his, his instructions were for life. They were stumbling around in spiritual darkness, no idea how to live, ignoring God's teaching, ignoring God himself. And as much as a, uh, Isaiah was a prophet of warning, saying, hey guys, uh, destruction is coming. If you don't change, I mean, God's going to look at the sin of, of, of what we're doing and, and we're going to get it. So as much as he was a prophet of warning, he was also a prophet of hope, saying, it's all going to come back. God will restore. God's going to bring a Savior. And Isaiah is filled with, with prophecies of a coming Messiah, a Messiah of Jesus who would come 700 years later. And in Isaiah, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, he says, Isaiah says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Arise from the ashes that you're lying in. Arise in, from the darkness that has surrounded you. Arise from the sadness and the gloom and the depression that has ensnared you. Arise from the sin and the grief over the sin that you have done and the shame in your life. Arise and shine, your light has come. Your light has come. Now, this, that little phrase, the glory of the Lord, one commentator says, that's not talking about, maybe you've heard uh, the Old Testament term, the Shekinah glory, you know, you know like it's, it's not talking about like the glory of, of God, like that shone on Moses' face when he'd come after meeting him and he was like glowing. It's not talking about that. It's not talking about the uh, glory of God that like rested on the Ark of the Covenant and the cloud and the fire and that. It wasn't talking about that. It's just, what that phrase is talking about is the glory of the Lord in person. He's talking about the coming Jesus, the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ himself. And it's describing a spiritual sunrise that's going to come upon the land. Yes, we're in darkness. Yes, things are awful. Yes, you're looking around thinking, how can, that, can it ever get worse? Now, they do get destroyed. I mean, they do pay the penalty for their sins. But sometime later, the, the sun does rise, and it's a spiritual renewal that comes as the land after some pain, decides, man, we've got to get back to God. That's what he's describing. And it's some 700 years later that this light that Isaiah was talking about came to earth. His name was Jesus. He was the Son of God. And he came, and his light shined brightly, and darkness fled before him. Story after story of, after story of Jesus in the gospel talks about darkness fleeing before him. And, and, and we've looked at this before. You remember him standing on a mountain in Matthew chapter 5, and he's preaching to the people around him, and he says, you are the light of the world. Talking to the, to the Jesus people, to, 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 to us. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand that gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So Jesus, the light that the prophet Isaiah was talking about, the one who is light, says, to you and I, if you're part of the kingdom, if you're a Jesus follower, you believe in Jesus, you're a Christian, right? You are the light of the world. Now, now, I don't have the authority to call you light. I can call you anything. It doesn't mean anything. You don't have authority to call yourself light. But the one who is light 
The one who, who came as the Son of God, lived, died, rose three days, days later from the grave. He, you are whatever he says you are. <laughs> I mean, he's the one with it. He has the authority to say that. So Jesus, the one who is the light, says you are the light of the world. You, me, we are the light in this world. We are the ones bringing a sunrise into a dark world that, that, that we live. He tells a couple parables, Jesus does in Matthew 13, each that speak about very small and insignificant things. I don't know about you, I, I don't think of myself as a significant person. I, I'm not like Mr. Evangelist. I don't walk down the street and everybody I talk to suddenly falls on their knees and says, I want to follow Jesus. I don't get on, on a bus and, and when I get off, everybody there suddenly become Christians. I mean, I, you know, I love that. That'd be really cool. Uh, but that, I don't know anybody. I personally don't know anyone who this ever happened to. I just don't see that. You know, those are stories you might read in books or, or hear in in conferences where like that one dude and then you wonder how much that's embellished i don't i don't, I don't know but um uh, you just don't see that i'm just this guy right and, and, and in matthew 13 jesus gives a couple parables of just us just normal small regular things becoming bigger the parables of the kingdom the kingdom of heaven chapter 13 verse 31 it's like a grain of mustard seed it's just a small simple thing a man took and sowed in a field, and it's smallest of seeds, but it has grown, it's larger than all the garden plants. It becomes a tree, which is bigger than normal, <laughs> right? He, he, he kind of blows it up so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. The next verse, he tells another short little, little, little parable. Uh, he told him another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was, it was all leaven. Took a little bit of leaven, threw it in, and, and, and pretty soon the whole batch a flower was 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 like saturated is that a good word for, for leaven uh, leaven's so small you you can't see it you can't smell it you don't know it's there i mean you went, once it's working you might smell it but like just one little thing of leaven one little cell you, you don't even know it, it's there you can't taste it it's just it's just it's nothing but but it starts multiplying and pretty soon it's a whole bunch of them that's when it starts doing things that's when dough becomes like uh, risen. That's when things happen. And, and he's saying what starts with a little bit and it just spreads and goes crazy. It goes crazy. One single cell doesn't impact a large amount of dough by itself, but when it multiplies, it impacts the whole thing. The same with a mustard plant. It starts as a small seed, <clears throat> but it's going to grow large enough to, to literally support birds of the air, which is uh, a visual that the, the, the person who, people who read this or heard this first, uh, in the first century were like, what? That doesn't make sense. Because these were like the big scavenger birds, like big, heavy, the ugly, uh, the scourge of society, the, the birds that like, are stinky and gross and scary and, and, and you know, they eat dead things that, that, that the other animals left behind and, and, and you know, roadkill that the chariot ran over and, and all that kind of, you know, like gross, nobody hangs out with, with, with the, these kinds of birds. But Jesus says, that's what the kingdom of God is like. This little book actually becomes a tree and, and these big birds are, are strong, they, it's strong enough support to support and let these birds nest and live in the branches of the tree. That's what the kingdom of God is like. Again, one little seed's not going to do anything, but it grows and multiplies and becomes branches and leaves, and, and it supports it supports all of society, all of society. We're called to go change uh, our world. I'm not going to do that. Uh, you're not going to do that. But we can. But we can. Just going out and living and being Jesus people. It's really that simple. Us just living the way Jesus said to live, talking the way Jesus said to talk, doing the things Jesus said to do. Just being Jesus people makes an impact on our society. That's what being light is. That's what being a mustard seed planted in a fertile ground is. That's what being eleven is. It's just being who you. you it's, it's just being Jesus, people. I, I, I mean, seriously, I, I've been a, a, a serious believer for, for four decades of my life, and I've seen very few examples of of that person who just runs around sharing Jesus and everybody jumps up and down and suddenly becomes a believer. It's not that it can't happen or doesn't happen. I I, I know very few legitimate stories like that. 
But there are tons of stories of people who are just kind of observing Christians and say, man, I just, I just want to know what you know. I want to, there's something about you that is different. Can you tell me a little bit more about, about this, this Jesus? I've seen that over and over and over and over again. People out just being light in darkness. And when I mean light, like it's, it's what I've been saying, it, it, it's just living Jesus. It's just acting like, like, like Jesus says to act. That's being yeast. It's being a, a seed. I, I won't go into great detail. I've shared these stories before, but I, I can't help but think of like the time my, my wife was in the hospital and, and, and she was going to be rushed into emergency surgery and she was bleeding to death and uh, there was a tubal pregnancy and, and, and we were having conversation with the nurse in the emergency room and, and, and all of a sudden they come in and whisk her away and she almost died. I didn't realize how close it was until the doctor told us later. No, it was really close. And, and um, how odd it was a few weeks later for that nurse to show up. We're like, who is that? She looks familiar. And, and then she introduces, yeah, I was the nurse in the emergency room. And uh, I could tell that you guys were Christians. We're like, we still don't know. We still don't know what, like, what? what? We, didn't, we didn't, like, you know, take that opportunity to say, can I invite you to Jesus Christ? We just were being Christians. <laughs> we were just being, you know, going through our own crisis evidently differently than other people go through crises in an emergency room. And she said, I want to I wanna know, who know who you know. I want, I want part of that. Still there, active in, in the church. That was, that was years ago. Uh, that was before <laughs> Jana was even born. I, I think of the little guy named Jim who <clears throat> uh, was hit in the face with a, with a baseball in Little League, and they think he broke his nose, but it was late at night. And were, you know, it was a small town. They were, anyway, they just said, come, come in tomorrow morning, and we'll take x-rays. And, and so I heard about it, and I thought, oh, I'll go check out and see if the family wants me to pray. You know, I don't know. And so I go in there, and they don't really know who I am other than, like, that preacher at that church, and I don't really know who they are. And it's a little bit awkward. And I said, hey, I heard you got hit in the face, and you're kind of scared, and, and, and can I just pray with you? They're like, well, sure, you can pray. And then before you know it, uh, now, they, he had been coming to our, to our church, uh, the little boy, but the family hadn't. And then suddenly the family starts showing up, and, and uh, pretty soon they're getting baptized, and, and like all the kids are getting baptized, and it's kind of spreading. And, and then those kids grow up, and they start having kids, and those kids are getting baptized, be, being raised in Jesus. And, and, and I think, wow, these generations changed. This light entered their world. And it's, it's really kind of crazy, but a small world, it wasn't planned this way. Uh, Shanna's now roommates with the daughter of uh, the brother of the baseball kid that was hit uh, in, uh, in the face. And uh, they're good friends, and, and, and of course we've known each other forever. But um, uh, and it's like, wow, she, that gal was raised. All she knew was a Christian family. But we knew them before when they didn't know. I don't know. I didn't go in there and say, let me tell you about Jesus today. I, I, I just said, hey, can I pray for you? <laughs> you know? Um, and then they, like, we're like, wow, you came to our hospital. It's just, just being Jesus, just being kingdom people. When you act like the kingdom, it, it, it just does things. Sean, I always say my friend Sean, he was many of your friends, Sean, too. Uh, one of Des Moines' premier DJs some 15 years ago had, uh, I don't know, 10, 10, 12 guys working for him every weekend. I mean, he just pretty much covered central Iowa uh, with, with um, DJ music. Um, and uh, worked in a lot of bars as a as a bouncer and and uh, uh, pretty wild lifestyle. Uh, he he confided in me at one point that um, he 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 probably was an alcoholic, uh, at least borderline, uh, when we met. Uh, addicted to pornography, um, very angry about his father that had died ten years earlier um, at a pretty young age. Um, not generally the guy that just goes to church randomly someday, but uh, the church had done some event, they hired a DJ, and he happened to be it, and several people happened to say, hey, you got to come to church. He's like, uh, whatever, and there was enough people, like, okay, I guess, and he shows up at church and builds a relationship with, with people and uh, came to know Jesus and got excited about Jesus and was baptized into Jesus, and his sons were baptized. Eventually, became staff at at the church. Um, died during a workout uh, a few years ago, uh, as he was working out at age 44. A lot of you were here then. Uh, I think he's 
He's in heaven today, though, because several of, maybe some in this room, I don't, I don't know who it was even, several people said, hey, you got to come to church. They were just having fun at a church event. They hired a DJ and invited him to church. And how cool is it that because of the ripple effect of that, his son came to Christ and was baptized and at age 10 said, man, someday I'm going to grow up and, and get in ministry. And, and now he runs our youth department and he preached here last Sunday uh, from here. Um, and for me, it was so cool to sit back and think, I know the history. And it wasn't somebody coming up to him, throwing a Bible in his face and saying, hey, it was just people being light. Not even aware of the darkness he was in. Stuff he confided in me later was like, wow, he was in some pretty dark stuff. Um, he, he, he was in fights. He was continually in fights. Uh, never lost one and ever. Because um, if you know him, he was a monster. <laughs> I mean, he could literally, he's one of those guys like you see on TV, he could literally pick you up with one hand. I was nice to him a lot. Um, <laughs> because, uh, Jeff, Jeff and, and, and Shelly, uh, she's given her testimony here, uh, was that last year, year before probably. Um, I, I didn't know Shelly. I, I, I ran, I prayed, God, um, where, where do you want me to get my hair cut? Uh, he said, I don't know, just get it, get it done. But, you know, uh, So I, I went to Merle Hay Mall and just randomly picked a place and randomly picked whoever was available. And then I said, okay, this is her. And I just kept coming back. And, and we would talk just Jesus stuff. This is before Pathway was born. And I said, hey, I'm coming up with a church name. I need a church name. You know, just, just talking random stuff. And uh, I had no idea at the time that she was one of Des Moines' fastest growing drug dealers. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, and, and, and was heavily, you know, uh, just getting herself in some, some big trouble. And she's told all this. It's all on YouTube. It's, just, I'm not like, <laughs> uh, it's, it's her story. Um, and uh, she starts coming to church, and, and she, she gives her life to Jesus. And I think of her children being raised in Jesus and, and uh, just the ripple effect that's happened. Through that. uh, I just this guy. You know, it's just this guy. Uh, uh, Cheryl and I have a friend, Jeff and Shelley, who um, were the kind of the birds of the air in, in Atlantic when we lived there, and, and people didn't like them. They were pretty wild. They were drug addicts and alcoholics and, and uh, had um, uh, physically threatened community leaders and, and uh, publicly done so. Um, and, and um, it, it, you know, people just stayed away from them. And, and Cheryl worked with the wife uh, a, a short time. And uh, I don't know, we just, whenever we saw them in public, we just said hi. I mean, I didn't even think anything about it. Hey, how you doing? I remember sitting next to him at McDonald's when it happened to show up and I just had a conversation. What are you doing? Oh, okay. I mean, it, nothing. Just, just the conversation. And, and, and one day, uh, they walk in and I run down the hall and tell Cheryl, uh, your friend's here. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if I knew their name at the time. I said, what? Jeff and Shelley are here. And they look down and she's like, whoa. And like, they never stopped coming. <laughs> they just kept coming. Baptizing the Christ, gave their lives to Jesus. The kids were raised in the church. Uh, we're still very good friends with them. How cool is that? That's just living Jesus. That's just being light in darkness. We treated them with respect. We loved them as people. I didn't care what they had going on in their private life. I wasn't judging them for what was going on. I just treated them like real human beings because, well, they are. <laughs> and... Uh, as the light appeared in their world, they grasped it. And they said, yeah, I want that. I want that. See, that's what light does. Guys, we live in, we live in dark times. I mean, it's not new. Isaiah did. I mean, it's not like, boy, things are sure good and bad. We just live in dark times. Until Jesus comes back, we live in dark times. Let's just face that, right? And we don't even know what's going on in the lives of people around us. And it's not our business. I mean, it's, I don't, it's just not my business to get, on, get into people's lives and tell them what they're doing is right or wrong. It's, it's, I just know we're living in dark times. That, that's all I need to know. So I want to be light. I want to be light in darkness. 
I, I want to I wanna be a positive influence in someone's life. I want to represent Jesus in someone's life. I want to treat them like human beings with dignity and, and, and talk to them you know, face-to-face and man-to-man and like, like, like a person who deserves it. A lot of people have been stumbling around in the dark and they've fallen into pits and, and some of them don't even know they're in a pit. They're just bumping into the walls trying to figure out. They're just dark and it's scary and they don't even know what's going on around them until the light comes on. Then they go, oh, I'm in a pit. I need to get out of here. And you happen to have the answer. I can tell you how to get out of the pit. <laughs> I can tell you. His name's Jesus. Let's turn the light on the rest of the way. You want to know illumination? Let me tell you about Jesus. He is the light that came into this world. When people see how you live and people see and hear how you talk and they see uh, how you behave at, at work and at home and with your family and whatever it is you've got going on, light begins to break through the darkness in their lives. They can see it. They can see it. And Jesus becomes clearer and clearer and the darkness eventually turns to light. So let me just say, pathway, arise. Arise. Go shine as lights. You already are light. Don't hide it under a bushel. <laughs> Don't be the light on the city with it under a bush. You know, go out and shine as lights. Arise and live like Jesus where you work, wherever it is you work. Arise and be Jesus wherever you eat, wherever you shop, wherever you get gas, wherever you get groceries. You arise and go out to a world that is, is walking around aimlessly because it's dark you can be that glimmer of light arise and shine your light has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon you isaiah 60 verse 1 let's stand together let's pray